Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Paul from Ladder 5. This is going to be our annual refresher video to help us refresh our memory on how to perform the tactics of an ice rescue, also to go over the equipment and the terminology. I hope you enjoy the video. What's your name? Paul! Oh. What's your name? Paul! Oh. Fire department, we're coming to get you. How long have you been out there? Oh. Hold on to the shelf, we're sending a rescue, we're going to come get you. Is there anybody out there with you? Oh no, it's me! Keep looking forward, sir. Sir, hang on to the knife, look forward. We're coming right behind you, okay? Let's get started. So one of the most important things for us to do is to communicate with dispatch. When we get toned to a call of an ice rescue, we want to communicate with dispatch and find out more information. Whether it be a single person that has fallen through the ice or a dog, it's important for us to address dispatch again, gather more information, because at any point in time the call can change from the initial dispatch to the time you show up on scene. That may be that one patient falls through and by the time you get on scene, there's two or three patients. Or maybe it's a dog and that's what we get toned to, but by the time we get on scene, the owner went out on the ice to get the dog and then they fell through. And now we have a little bit of a bigger call. These are important questions to figure out because it determines what rigs we need to come on this assignment. If it's a person who's fallen through the ice, we may need the dive team and we're also gonna need additional resources, more ice rescue rigs, maybe even the TRT team. If it's a dog that falls through the ice, it's important for us to know that there is a good chance that the owner is gonna follow them out. And if the owner does follow them out and fall through, we now need to up the resources because we now have a dog rescue and a human rescue. So let's talk about the initial scene size up. If this is our call and we arrive here to this lake, Obviously, the water is freezing cold. The person that we're rescuing is not going to have a lot of time to hold themselves above the ice shelf before they get so cold that they lose motor function. They'll become hypothermic and either stop communicating or lose grip of that ice shelf and potentially go under. So we need to be fast, efficient when it comes to these types of rescues. When we get the call at the station, our best bet is to probably get in our Mustang suits, get fully dressed up prior to leaving for the call. When we get on scene, we need to be able to find the rope bags, find the equipment we need, get down to the shoreline as fast as possible and start the evolution so we can have the best outcome. So once we get down to the shoreline and we're ready to do our rescue, it's important for somebody to make contact with that patient. We want to get a level of consciousness right away. We also want to ask them if they are awake and alert, if they were the only people that went through on the ice. If they are unable to talk to us, then we need to use other means to figure out that information. Either look for footsteps on the ice or the snowbank, use bystanders and ask them if they saw how many people went through the ice. This is important because again, the more people we have through the ice, the more rescue teams we need. And if anybody went under the ice, we need the dive team to complete this rescue. When we are down by the ice and we're fully zipped up, remember we need a backup team. Remember that the rescuer that's getting ready to go into the water or the ice is fully suited up and has had a safety check. When I refer to a safety check, that means that that rescuer zipper has been inspected and fully zipped up and closed. It also means that your carabiner is locked into the D-ring on your harness. 
that your harness is underneath your armpits and not over your arms. It's also important for somebody to check and make sure that the ghost sling is set up correctly for the rescuer and that the carabiner is locked in on the rescuer. These are important steps to do before we start making our way out onto the ice. Remember, when we're down by the shore, another important thing to know is that we all need to be in the appropriate PPE. The rescuers need to be in their Mustang suits. All other personnel need to be in, a, at absolute minimum, a PFD. If you do not have a PFD on, then you should be the furthest away from the shoreline. It is also very important to note that no bunker gear should be worn down by the ice or by any open water ever. Okay, awesome. Let's move on to terminology and hand signals. This is important for us to be on the same page when we arrive on scene. So understanding this terminology makes things run and operate a lot smoother. So let's go over shore support. Shore support consists of several different things within itself. We have incident command or any commanding officer. We also have the safety officer, haul team, and we have runners. The runners would be people that may not be ice rescue certified, but are taking equipment from the engine and ladder trucks and bringing them down to the shore. Our haul team is important, although it works through the shore support, they are the ones specifically responsible for pulling the patient and the victim back into shore when they're ready. We also have a rescue team. The rescue team consists of whoever is going to be backup or primary rescuer. The primary rescuer is going to be fully dressed up. The backup rescuer will be at 90% at a minimum. Those are people part of the rescue team. Next, I want to cover hand signals. Hand signals are important because this is the way that the rescuer will communicate back to the haul team or shore support, letting them know what they need done. The first thing we'll cover is taking up slack. Take up slack is a fist on the top of your head and bouncing it up and down. The next one we'll go over is hauling. When we're ready to be hauled into shore, and take the patient and ourselves up over the ice shelf, we want to use the indication for hauling. That's going to be hand wide open, 90 degrees, and extension. This is indicating to the haul team that you're ready to be pulled into shore. The final hand signal we want to cover is to stop. That is going to be 90 degrees at your elbow with a fist. That's the indication for the haul team to now stop their operation and let the rescuer fix whatever they need to fix. All right, so we just covered getting the tones at the station to getting on scene. The things that we're looking to do quickly, efficiently, so we can get the job done fastly and safely. Now let's get into the tactical parts on how we're gonna actually perform the rescue. So remember our sequence. We're gonna self-rescue, we're gonna reach we're gonna throw, and then we're gonna go. So it's important for us to know how to actually rescue ourselves from the ice so we can teach that to the patients or victims that are in the water on the ice shelf. As you can see in this video, it's important to use your elbows, try to drive your elbows into the ice shelf, kick, get your hips up onto the ice, and the second your hips are up, you want to roll off of the ice shelf. This other part of the video leads right into using your pick calls. Some people that are on the ice may have them that have fallen through. It also could be for yourself. So it's important that we know how to use those as well. The only difference is, is now instead of using your elbows, you're going to use the pick calls to jam those into the ice. Using your biceps to pull yourself up onto the ice shelf once your hips have made it over that edge, same thing applies, you wanna roll off of that ice ledge to get yourself onto thicker ice. All right, let's go over a right-sided go rescue. 
What we're gonna do is we're gonna place the large carabiner in our right hand. We're gonna take the other part of the sling and put it in our left hand. As you can see in this video, we're gonna to walk to the right side of the patient. As we get up to the patient, we wanna make sure that we get low to the ground, preferably crawling on all four. When we're ready to enter into the water, we wanna lead with our feet first. Once we're in the water, we now wanna take the sling, wrap it underneath the patient's arms, clipping the large carabiner back onto the sling. We wanna to try to center that carabiner up with their chest and hike the sling up as high as you can into the armpit area. At this point in time, you can call for the haul team to take up slack. Before you come into shore, you wanna make sure that you grab the patient's legs, bring them back behind them from underneath the ice shelf as high as you can to the surface of the water. At that point in time, you can call for the haul team to take you into shore. And now you're fighting for all of the broken people, all of the people thrown overboard. They always try to shame us, but they don't speak the language. No, we're not nameless, we're not faceless, we were born for greatness. Okay, moving right along. Let's do a left-sided go rescue. The only difference now is that we're gonna be approaching on the left side of the patient. So now we need to place that large carabiner in our left hand and the other end of the sling into our right hand. Same thing applies as we walk out to the left side. We're just gonna get really low to the ice, crawling on all fours and then leading into the water with our feet first. We're gonna wrap the sling around the patient, center up that large carabiner again, and pull that up as high into the armpits as possible. And again, we can take up slack at this point in time, grab their legs, pull their legs back from underneath the ice shelf to the surface of the water, and then tell the haul team you're ready to come into shore. We're not nameless, we're not faceless, we were born for greatness. We're not nameless, we're not faceless, we were born for greatness. Let's talk about the rescue board. Now, if we need to use this in our evolution, we have to set this up on scene at the shoreline. You'll wanna grab the board as you see in this video and stand it upright. You have three rings. You need to take the large carabiner and feed that through all three rings by opening the carabiner up, allowing the ring to slide through and then moving on to the next ring and then to the next ring. You then take the attachment that goes to your harness, which is the rope with another smaller carabiner, and you'll feed that through all three rings as well. Once they're pulled all the way through, then you're ready to attach that system back to your harness, grab your go sling and grab the board and perform your rescue. Now that you have the rescue board and the sling attached to your harness, you're gonna make your way out on the ice. You're still gonna stay low to the ice as you approach the patient or the victim. As you can see in this video, you're gonna slide the board up to them. Once they have a hold of it, you're gonna make it to either the right or the left side. Again, staying low and entering with your feet first. You're gonna make your go sling attachment the same as you do, whether you do it right or left. You'll place the large carabiner around onto the sling, centering that onto their chest, and hiking that up as high into the armpit as you can. When you go to tell them to take up slack, it's important that you feed the knots all the way through all three D-rings before you haul into shore. So this part of the video is gonna show you how we can take the board and use it as a mechanical advantage. You're gonna enter the ice as you would always do for a rescue, but you're gonna stop about 20 feet back. You wanna give yourself enough rope on the back side of the rings and enough rope on the front side of the rings so when you slide the board up there it does not get hung up. 
Once the patient grabs a hold of the board, you then want to position yourself in line with the hall team. It's the same hand signals. When you give them the hall signal, they'll pull the patient up over the ice ledge and along the ice meeting up with you. Once they meet up with you, that is your time to jump onto the board with the patient and make sure that they don't fall off and ride all the way into shore. Well, that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed the video. I just wanna remind you, train regularly on this to be proficient at these skills. They don't come easy and it takes years to be experienced at them. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you soon.